How to request angelic assistance urgently, it really works. Have you ever wondered why some prayers are answered quickly while others seem to go unanswered? The answer lies in the way believers communicate with God. Many Christians don't know how to present their petitions effectively, offering God convincing enough reasons to grant their requests. Let's explore this. The spiritual realm operates in much the same way as a courtroom where God is the supreme judge. When we approach him in prayer, we are essentially presenting our cases before a heavenly tribunal. How we present our arguments can determine the outcome. Jesus' death on the cross gave us direct access to God's throne of grace, allowing us to present our cases with boldness. However, many Christians don't know how to do this properly, resulting in weak and often unanswered prayers. To understand this better, imagine two sick people seeking healing through prayer. The first person prays simply asking God to be healed. Their prayer is sincere, but lacks substance. The second person, on the other hand, prays by reminding God of his promises of healing found in Scripture. She quotes specific passages from the Bible, such as Exodus 15 verse 26, where God reveals himself as the Lord who heals, in Isaiah 53 verse 5, which states that, by his wounds we are healed. This second approach not only shows a deep understanding of God's word, but also demonstrates a solid faith in his promises. God values it when his children remember his words and claim his promises with confidence. In doing so, we are essentially arguing our case based on what God has already declared. The act of reminding God of his words is not because he has forgotten them, but because it demonstrates our faith and knowledge of Scripture. When Jesus was tempted in the desert, he repeatedly used the words, it is written, to repel the devil's temptations. This is a powerful strategy that we can use in our prayers, reinforcing our requests with divine promises. Therefore, when seeking angelic assistance or any other blessing from God, it is crucial to present our cases clearly and based on God's word. Reminding God of his promises and arguing on the basis of scripture not only strengthens our faith, but also positions us favorably before the heavenly court. This is not only an effective practice, it is a demonstration of our intimate and knowledgeable relationship with God, who honors his word above all else. The first person prays simply, God, I'm sick, please heal me, and stops there. The second person prays in a much more detailed and reasoned way, saying, Lord Jesus, sickness is trying to take hold in my body, but your word in Exodus 15 verse 26 states that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals me. In Jeremiah 30 verse 17, you promise to restore my health. Isaiah 53 verse 5 confirms that through Jesus' wounds I am already healed. Psalm 103 verses 2 to 3 mentions that you have forgiven my sins and healed all my diseases. In Matthew 8 verse 17, you promise to take away my sicknesses and diseases. In 1 Peter 2 verse 24, you say that by your wounds I am healed. Lord, I present your word back to you as proof that you want me to walk in divine health. I reject this sickness now, because in Mark 16 you gave me power over sickness. I don't want to die because it is written in Psalms 118 verse 17 that I will not die, but live and proclaim the works of the Lord. Romans 1 verse 17 says that the just shall live by faith. By faith. I stand on your word and declare total healing in my body, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the truth is that the prayer of the second person has much more power and weight than that of the first. The reason is simple. The second person prayer is grounded in scripture. It's not about the length of the words, but the quality. The second person's prayer is much more pleasing to God because they argue their case based on what is written and not just based on emotions. The statement it is written is extremely powerful. Not even Satan can resist it. The moment you mention what is written, everything submits. Notice that every time Jesus said, it is written, 
The devil always changed the subject because even he knows that God's word is extremely powerful. Years ago, before my grandfather passed away, he always said that he wouldn't die until he was 100 years old. This seemed like a joke to us because we knew that only God had the final word on how long a person would live. In fact, my grandfather told us several times over the years that if we heard that he had died before the age of 100, we shouldn't take the news seriously. We laughed about it, but as I watched him closely, I discovered that his secret lay in his belief system, his prayers, and the word of God. He often quoted Psalm 118 verse 17, saying that he would not die, but would live to declare the works of the Lord. He prayed on the basis of God's promises, firmly believing in them, and this shaped his life and his longevity. Sometimes my father and I would look for my grandfather all over the house, only to find him praying in secret. His prayers were always filled with petitions and quotations from Scripture. He had a habit of giving God detailed and well-founded reasons as to why he needed more time to live. One of his favorite verses was Psalm 118 verse 17, where he said, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. I remember several occasions when my father and I would enter his room and find him fast asleep. On several of these occasions, my father thought he had passed away. However, my grandfather would soon wake up and, with a peaceful smile, ask, What's wrong with you? He explained to us that he still had many people he wanted to help and that he needed more time to fulfill his divine purpose. He was true to his words and, surprisingly, passed away peacefully exactly one day after his 100th birthday. This longevity was no coincidence. He deeply understood the power of petition and always gave God a convincing reason to keep him alive. He believed that if you anchored your requests in God's word and gave solid reasons, God would honor his word above all else. My grandfather lived the truth that God's word is your strongest evidence. As long as you present what is written with confidence and give good reasons for what you want, God cannot back down from his word. Reminding God of his promises is not because he has forgotten, but because, by becoming co-heirs with Jesus, we have the same right to ask for what we want before God. Praying in this way is effective because we use the biblical promises as proof that God must grant our requests. Just as an earthly court operates by established laws, the heavenly throne also follows spiritual laws, and God judges according to his word. Psalm 138 verse 2 says that God honors his word above his name which means that he can never back down from his promises. When we present our petitions with confidence, like a lawyer presenting evidence, and not with flimsy pleas, we have a better chance of being heard. The Bible encourages us to approach the throne of grace with boldness to find mercy and help in times of need. Present your needs, argue your case based on God's word, and ask him to grant your request according to his promises. Job 23 verse 4 teaches us to fill our mouths with arguments before God. Confidence is key when presenting our case, and Hebrews 10 verse 19 encourages us to approach God with boldness and confidence because of Jesus' sacrifice. In the spiritual realm, our prayers are like cases presented before a just and faithful judge, who judges according to his word. God, the righteous judge, hears our case and makes a decision based on his word. As believers, we have the privilege of presenting our requests directly to him, thanks to the finished work of Jesus Christ. It is essential to argue our case before God on the basis of his own promises. For example, we can say, Lord, you have promised in your word that no weapon forged against me will prosper. Heavenly Father, your word says that you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Therefore, I boldly ask you to provide for this need that I am presenting today. Father, your word says that by your wounds I am healed, so I declare total healing in my body now. Sickness has no legal right to operate in me, for you have sent your word and healed me. The Bible assures us that God is not a liar. 
Therefore, when we remind him of his promises, he is faithful and just to fulfill them. In 2 Timothy, we are reminded that even when we are unfaithful, God remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Isaiah 55 verse 11 reinforces this truth, saying, So shall the word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sin it. God exalts his word above his name and is committed to honoring it. When presenting our requests, we must argue using his words to strengthen our position. This is similar to a lawyer using the law to defend a case. God appreciates it when we present our cases based on scripture because it shows that we know his word, trust him, and are diligent in studying his will. In Isaiah 1 verse 18, God invites us, Come now, and let us reason, says the Lord. Although God is our Father, and we can speak to Him with the intimacy of children, there are times when we need to approach Him as a judge. And the way to do that is by basing our arguments on what He has said. To argue our case effectively before God, we must know His Word. Supplication or petition is a form of prayer where we ask God for something in a fervent and humble way. The first step is to identify the promise. Find the verses in scripture that relate to your situation. The Bible is full of promises for every aspect of life. The second step is to prepare your case like a lawyer prepares for court. Gather your scriptures, understand them deeply, and present them with confidence. Approach God boldly, making sure that what you are asking for is in line with His will. 1 John 5 verses 14 to 15 encourages us, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have our requests. Your requests, when aligned with what God has already said in His Word, can be presented with boldness, knowing that He will confirm them. No power of darkness can stop God from fulfilling what He has already promised. So pray with confidence, use God's Word as your defense, and see His promises come true in your life. Finally, it is essential to stand firm in faith and fully trust that God will fulfill His Word. Hebrews 10 verse 35 encourages us, Do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. This trust and faith is exemplified in the prayers of biblical characters. For example, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, King Hezekiah was told that his death was near. In response, he prayed fervently to God, reminding him of his faithfulness and asking for more years of life. God heard his plea and added 15 years to his life. The text says, then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray you, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept greatly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, Behold, I will add 15 years to your days. Another powerful example is found in Exodus 32, verses 11 to 14. After the Israelites had made and worshipped a golden calf, God was ready to destroy them. However, Moses interceded, appealing to God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to his reputation among the nations. In verse 13, Moses specifically said, Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your descendants, that they may possess it forever. As a result, Exodus 32 verse 14 says, And the Lord repented of the evil which he had spoken to do to his people. These examples show that reminding God of His promises and maintaining a firm faith is a powerful approach to prayer. By doing so, we are showing God that we fully trust in His Word and His character. 
I hope this teaching has given you a deeper understanding of how to communicate with God effectively. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiring teachings.